Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds, and welcome to the second episode of the Experimental Yard. In the third video, we're going to show you one of these colonies having its second box added, and you can see many of them have had it done. We are trying to keep ahead of the bees as they are expanding quickly with this natural nectar and pollen coming in, and prior to that we were feeding. All these feeder buckets are now empty. We haven't fed them for two weeks. Nature has been providing very good this year and they're drawing a lot of foundation. So if you want to see that, stay tuned and that video will be here in just the next probably two days. So let's talk a little bit more about what we're doing. I've gone back and forth. I know I have, but any of you who follow me know that uh, you know, I've just got a lot of things going on, trying to do things the best that I can. But I keep telling myself Rome wasn't built in a day. That's all to say that we're gonna have four groups. I wanted to do five, but we need to keep this somewhat simple for Laurel and I. We are gonna be literally counting every bee and every varroa mite in the alcohol washes. I plan on doing three alcohol washes. One prior to treatment, one a couple weeks after the treatment, and then doing one prior to going into winter. That way we can see what we've done and how well it worked. That's going to involve tens of thousands of unfortunately dead bees being counted for science and a lot of row mites. That's going to take a lot of time. Thanks to everyone who has supported us and donated. I also need to talk about that towards the end of the video. Um, some negativity just in a few spots but I want to address it in a positive manner. So we are going to have again four groups. Wanted to do five. We're going to have a control group we are going to have a formic acid group using the formic pro product by nod we are going to be using the apigard product which is thymol and then we are going to be using oxalic acid vapor with a brood break and again i like to do more but the goal is to have this test running again next year just with different treatments or maybe taking the best one that worked from this year and carrying that into the next year and see if we can duplicate the results or maybe fine tune it. So there's a lot of options. Those of you who go to our live chats a lot and keep in contact where you can, um, you know, we want to hear your thoughts on it constructively, please. And we just plan to do this for multiple years. There is a lot of variables with this. This main, the main focus of this is to encourage you all to be a little bit better with your bees. I know that I, when I started doing that, a little bit more testing, a little more thought put into my control of my bees' health has made a huge difference. This is to give you the basics of what we try to do and what we're trying to shoot for. There's gonna be some variables. If you live in Florida, you're gonna make more mites. Probably, more than likely. If you're in North Dakota, you're not gonna make as many. You just, your bees don't brood as long. You all know that that have watched my videos. However, there are some people like, have you made sure all the queens are from the same lines? Have you made sure all the bees have the same amount of bee coverage? Well, you have insulated hives and you have non-insulated hives and the variables that are gonna be there, you know, it's, I understand that. Every beekeeper has variables, even within their own bee yard. That's just part of it. The science part of it, is really secondary to me. And some of you are probably gonna be like, what? But yes, I'm a beekeeper. I run a business. The people that I try to help through YouTube, they're trying to keep their bees alive. We will never run out of variables. We will never run out of things to test. And there's always gonna be the what ifs. However, for a beekeeping business like mine, we can't wait for those what ifs five years from now, three years from now, any of those things. I'm out of business. And many of you maybe aren't running this for a business, but you want it as a sideline, or you want to be that beekeeper that's not shelling out $3,000 a year in new bees. I liked it when we finally got past that point, let me tell you. Laurel did too. Uh, she's over there like, amen. So, uh, but seriously, our primary goal is to help everyone and help ourselves control Varroa. We don't always have to understand how it works. It just needs to work. We are going to try to be as scientific as possible. Like I said, we're counting out the doggone bees. 
So that's going to be a lot of work. There are going to be some variables. There's going to be some colonies, I promise you, out of these 52, if it's anything like the rest of my bee yards, that are going to supersede. That's going to affect the mite loads and mite counts. There's going to be those things. But if you're running 52 colonies, you're going to see that anyways. It's part of it. So we're going to run this as just like we do our business. And as we're going to do the videos, like in the third one coming up, we're going to show you exactly how we would do it normally. Our goal is to get all of these up to double deeps because here in Tennessee, when you get a nuke in April or May, you are probably not getting a honey crop. If you'd have got that nuke maybe in March, yeah, you, pr you probably, and it was a good nuke, you could probably get a honey crop off of it, especially if you had drawn comb. Not last year you couldn't have, but this year you could have. So lots of variables. I know I'm not getting any honey off of these gals this year. That's fine. The goal is to get them all, if possible, to double deep strength and to run them successfully through the winter. And hopefully we can get a very sustainable amount of these colonies with multiple test groups with each product. And so if you prefer using Formic, maybe we can help you out with that a little bit. Thiamol, oxalic acid, all that stuff. But we're going to run this like we do our business with the goal to have success and if we can get some sciencey stuff done at the same time, that's great. We definitely want to do that if possible. We are going to be moving these shortly. The control group is going to go to an area all by itself. I don't want it contaminating any of the other colonies as the mite loads build. There's going to be a caveat with the control group. When they get to about late August, mid-August, we are going to treat them. We are going to show you the alcohol washes, show you the unsustainable mite loads that they have, and then we are going to treat them. There may be a couple of them that aren't at a really high level. We are still going to treat them. We are not trying to breed for a super bee through this series, and it's not that easy. I've tried that before. But it's going to be separate. The, the rest of the three groups of 13, they're going to be in a bee yard all to themselves, and they will be treated timely like we were doing it for our business and doing our best to keep them healthy. When we move these bees, we're going to show you how we do that. I'm excited to, to see that work. I've got a, a new trailer I'm excited to use for it, and it's nice and low to the ground, so that means it works perfectly for Laurel and I. Mostly Laurel, you know, it's a little short for me, but don't give me that look back there. And All right, look, come on over here. So you can see these stainless steel um, plugs. This is hive number one. On the other side of the pallet is hive number two. And so forth. Now, one of the things that we are going to do on the Apamaze is um, since we can't really, I guess we might could screw into them, but we're not going to. We are going to probably get some really strong glue and glue that down on those. We haven't done that yet, but we will shortly. Now, we need to talk about the whole sponsorship deal. One of the things I like to say is we didn't cold call Premier or Hilco or any of these guys. You need to check them out. You do. I, you don't have to, but I think you should. I didn't call them up. Either they called me, but most of the time it was somebody th through the channel that was like, hey buddy, I've Cayman Reynolds is doing this, you should get on board. It was mostly that, almost entirely. And I gotta say thank you to them. They have really helped make this possible. I gotta say thank you to many of you. So many people have donated and I can't tell you how much we appreciate that because it takes so many hours to set this up, run this, and do all of those things and count those bees once we get to the alcohol wash and that you know that takes time away from our regular colonies and other things that we do so it really makes a difference and we appreciate you supporting us but we picked people that i felt like you could communicate with that are concerned about bees and beekeepers and that after we researched them i felt like had a quality product this is it the only quality product on the market i'm sure it's not but we made sure it wasn't some junk product. And the nice thing I like about all of them is you can get every single one of them on the horn and get your problems addressed if you have them. I've been very happy with the people who have sponsored us. 
not just because they've sponsored us, but also they really stand behind their product. They're good communicators. And I really feel like if you call them and you have a legitimate issue, they will really take care of you. And there are some people that asked to be a part of this that we said no because we didn't think that they would. So some people have an issue with that. My argument is you cannot go forward without making you can't you can't go forward by yourself Laurel and I are very limited we can only do so much by ourselves do you realize that without you all watching these videos they would never exist we can make them but we would give up and many of you encouraged us to keep doing them and we have and look how far we've come that is a large part part due to you all and thank you very much for making this possible and because of all the pieces that have come together and the work that everyone has done, I feel like we are going to be able to do great things because that's how great things are done. Maybe one, you know, that's the unfairness of it all. It's kind of like with football. The quarterback gets all of the attention. It's like Laurel is probably doing 80% of all the work. You guys don't know that. <laughs> but I run my mouth and I was like, hey, did you see Cayman Reynolds' video? No one talks about Laurel except maybe her giggles. She's the one over here going, Cayman, you need to do this, 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 and this, and this, and hurry up, would you? And now she's not like that, but seriously, it, it takes an army to make these things happen. And I appreciate you all being um, so supportive in every way that you have. Thank you so much. Thanks to our sponsors. I am going to have a sponsorship video coming up, and it's going to have nothing but stuff about our sponsors. You don't have to watch it. That's the cool thing about these videos. You can turn it off. But I think it would be neat to look into it. I've really enjoyed getting to know them. So that all to say, I just wanted to kind of give you some of the parameters, what we are actually doing. You know, some people think that I've sold out over the sponsorships. I don't look at it that way. But, you know, I did have one of my buddies comment on those buckets over there with the stickers and like, you're, you're turning this into NASCAR, aren't you? I'm like, no, I don't have anything on my clothes yet. Um, anyways, thank you for watching. Leave your comments below. We're going to keep trucking forward and hopefully stay out of that truck. We'll see you later.